Welcome back to Financial Management. My name is Miriam and I'll be walking you through Lesson 3, Part 3, Cards. We'll be talking about credit cards, debit cards, and prepaid cards. These cards all look the same and the terms are sometimes used interchangeably. We're going to dive into the differences of each and what to know when deciding which is the right option for you for different purchases. Your total comes to 2238. Okay. And how will you be paying for that today? Um, well, isn't it obvious? She can make her own decision. Uh, who said that? Hello. Ah! I can handle this purchase. Easy peasy. That's what debit cards do. Do you remember how awesome my rewards program is, though? Swipe me. We got this. I think what these two meant to say is that you want to use me. Prepaid debit. I mean, look at my logo. Just like a credit card. Cool, right? Please, you're nothing like me. I'm the only one here who can help build credit. You have literally zero effect on a credit score. But I don't need a whole special approval process. I'm accessible. Anyone can own me. I'm pretty accessible, too. And I tend to have less fees than you do for prepaid debit. Oh, yeah? Name one. Activation fees. Sometimes. Transaction fees. Not always. Reload fees. Whoa. Maintenance fees. I said one. At least I don't have to worry about crazy interest rates or overdraft fees. I do charge interest on balances, but that's the trade-off for a generous credit limit. You're limited to the amount loaded onto you. And you're limited to how much is in your checking account. <laughs> right, that's why people who hang out with you too much get into tons of debt. And every day it sounds like there's a headline about a new credit card data breach. <laughs> Don't give me that attitude. Debit and I are protected by federal law to minimize liability caused by that kind of stuff. If you get lost or stolen, you're out of luck most of the time. You're just jealous because everyone thinks I am cool and you can't handle it. How dare you challenge me, you good-for-nothing piece of plastic. Don't checking and savings accounts mean anything to Guys. anybody anymore? Guys, let's be cool. Can you just try and say something nice about each other? Come on. I know you can do it. Well, credit does have cool rewards. And if you're smart about it and don't carry a balance, she can be pretty great. And I guess prepaid debit can come in handy. Like if you're traveling. You can use it in lots of different places. And if it gets lost or stolen, it can't be used to access Yes, you don't. And debit? Like, I totally admire your affordability. And you can be used to take out cash from ATMs all over the world. You kind of rock at managing money, I must say. See, was that so difficult? I guess not. But getting back to your purchase, how are you going to pay? Yeah, Jen, who are you going to choose? Please, 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 pick me, pick Who's me. Who's it going to be? Pick me, pick me, pick me. Oh, I'm just going to pay with cash this time. No! Really? No! No way. You can't are you kidding me? Hee <laughs> hee. Guys, what about me? Uh, who are you? I'm an old gift card with 12 cents left on it. I'll show myself out. So to quickly recap the video, think of a debit card as the modern day equivalent of pulling out your checkbook and writing a check. They're linked directly to your checking account. The money you spend gets withdrawn immediately when you swipe your card and make your purchase. Your debit card is also the card you can use to withdraw money from an ATM. Both types of withdrawals take money directly from your checking account. The credit card is the only card designed to be used to purchase something you can't pay in full right away. So you're borrowing money from the bank. You'll get a credit limit from the credit card company when you apply. This is the maximum amount of money you can charge over your billing period, which is usually a month. It can be hard to get a credit card if you have low or no credit. The lower your credit score, the higher your interest rates and the lower your credit line will be. With a higher credit score, you'll get a lower or better interest rate and a higher credit limit. Getting a credit card and paying off the balance in full every month is a great way to build your credit score. We'll talk more about credit limits and interest rates in the credit portion of this class. For both credit and debit cards, if you're going to use them, it's really important to know how much money is in your account so that you can try to avoid paying high fees or interest rates. You want to check the amount in your account often. The banks make money when you spend more money than you have, 
or more money than you can pay off in a relatively short period of time. For prepaid cards, you choose the amount you load on the card. They're relatively low risk in terms of spending more money than you have, but they often have many fees, such as fees to activate the card, to reload the card, or to check your balance. These cards can be purchased at drugstores like Dwayne Reed, Walgreens, or CVS. They are often linked to credit card companies, so you might see a Visa icon on it, but they are not credit cards and do not raise or lower your credit score. Something to be really careful about with debit cards are overdraft fees. This is where the bank makes all their money on debit cards. While your debit card purchases don't have an interest fee attached like credit cards because they're withdrawing money directly from your checking account, the banks make money off these cards through the overdraft fees they charge you if you spend more money than you have in your account. The fee is usually pretty high. It can be 30 to $35 per transaction. So if you go to buy a cup of $3 coffee and you get hit for a $35 overdraft fee, your coffee has just jumped up to $38. It's also really important to note that banks can choose which debit card transactions hit your checking account first. So if you make multiple purchases in one day using your card, the bank can put the large purchase through first, knowing that those large purchases will lower your overall balance and then make you overdraft on all of the following smaller purchases. This way, they make more money in overdraft fees because they get to hit you with that $30 to $35 fee for each of the smaller transactions that you accidentally overdrafted. Thanks for watching this video. To get credit for completing this assignment, go back to your Google Classroom and click on the part lesson three, part three question. Submit a few sentences explaining which type of card your ComData card is most like and why.